there y'all gaffers welcome back i hope you're having a good week so far i'm loving the cozy corner so i'm gonna keep us here for now only complaint i have is that you can't see indiana jones anymore i have to like scoot my boot i don't know i'm gonna sugar my room a bit now with all my decorations and see what looks best but i'm having a cozy day today edinburgh is covered in snow so i'm all cozy down to my big hoodie having a lovely wee chilled out day just finished my class so Free for the weekend! Not quite snowed in, but I want to be snowed in. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about my paranormal experiences, ooh! And I omitted a big story. I'd rather dedicate a whole video to it to explain it fully. Therefore, today I'm going to be sharing a story with you which is all about my first experience with a proper psychic medium. A general disclaimer out there, all of these things that I'm about to tell you could have perfectly reasonable physical, scientific, psychological explanations, but I cannot explain them myself. I would consider them to be of the paranormal variety. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. If you think one of my experiences is completely explainable, please explain away. I would love to have some answers for some of this stuff. I'll give you some background context first. I went to see this woman when I was fairly young. It was very much start of high school. I think it was the summer going from S1 into S2 because I had my T-Mobile Pebble, which is actually key to the story. <laughs> but yeah, this was my first ever mobile phone. Isn't she gorgeous? It's not Nah, it's not charged. Oh fuck, I can't do it anymore. Yes. Hello, bitch. And this woman, she wasn't one of these psychics that was like, you'd go into a big auditorium and she'd be like, oh, I'm getting a John. He's in a military uniform. He wants to speak to his wife. Her name begins with an S. I'm getting Sally. I'm getting Susan. This wee woman, she was close to retiring when we went actually. Uh, but she was a proper psychic medium. Uh, you'd phone up to book in and go to her house and then she would do your readings at her house. My mum, my auntie and my auntie's best friend was who I went with and they had all been to see her years before and because they heard that she was retiring they thought we'll go again uh, one last time before she retires because obviously that kind of job takes its toll on you. It was just supposed to be my mum, my auntie and their pal but I tagged along for some reason cannot remember why for the life of me, do not know why but I tagged along nonetheless. So the way it worked is we drove to her house, she invited us in she didn't know I was coming, but she was fine with that. She was like, that's fine, because the way she does it is you'd go in, sit in her living room, and then she would take the adults through one by one to her conservatory, give them their reading and their spiritual guidance, whatever, and then they'd come back through and then the next person would go through. So it was all like one at a time. I was not getting a reading. I was just tagging along. So my auntie went in, came out, uh, our pal went in and came out, and they two decided that they wanted to go have a smoke and then sit in the car and wait. Um, and then my mum went in. So I was in the psychic's living room alone and this is when all the fun stuff started happening. So I'm sat in this woman's living room, right? My wee packet of crisps, my wee cup of tea and for some reason I vividly, vividly remember I was sat watching on her telly Paul O'Grady for the love of dogs. For some reason that just really stuck and I was sat there just minding my own business, enjoying the telly uh, and I could hear banging up the stairs. It sounded like a dog was running about up the stairs. I have dogs so I know what that sounds like. So my, I just thought you know, very logical, logical mind. I thought, oh, she has a dog and she's like, shut it upstairs because she has clients in. That's perfectly reasonable, right? Then I heard two very loud bangs come from the stairwell. Her stairs were like the usual, like 14 steps up the way, but it was one of the ones that's like, the steps go all the way up and then there was the wee, like, square landing and then another like two or three steps up to the side, if that makes sense. And I just thought, oh, the dog's got out or the dog's knocked something over her. Uh, so I didn't think anything of it. And then we were in the car going home and I was like, did that woman have a dog when you were last there? Or was there some sort of pet that she'd shut away? And my mum was like, yeah, uh, there was a really old dog that she had the last time my mum went, but it died. And then the icing on the cake on top of that, the woman had a husband as well. But he had funny legs and he ended up in a wheelchair. But when he was still walking, he would frequently topple off those two little like extra steps at the top of the stairs onto that landing. Uh, not going all the way down the full stairwell, but just down the wee top steps. And he's also dead. So who was banging about then? When my mum said that in the car though, I was just like, alarm bells. I heard her dead husband fall down the stairs. So I don't know if that was some strong residual energy or what, but I was so happy to get out of that house, my guy. I should have said this at the beginning, but I guess the way that she worked was that the spirits kind of channeled and used her energy to then speak to her clients. I'm not sure though, it could have been like she saw them and then just relayed the information they were telling her to the client. I don't, I don't know. I never had a reading myself. Well, I did have an uncalled for one. I know that 
different psychics have different methods and stuff, so I don't really know. This next bit absolutely chilled me to the bone. So my mum came out the room after her reading and then the woman followed her uh, out of the conservatory and I just got my stuff and I was like, I'm ready to leave. Thank you for the crisps, thank you for the tea, thank you for letting me sit and watch Paulo Grady get me out of your house. I mentioned in the last video that both my grannies are dead. One died when I was quite young, the other one died in my late teens. So when this event happened, one grandmother was dead. The psychic lady, before she went into that room, obviously I was just tagging along. I wasn't actually getting a read in. She was perfectly nice. She wasn't particularly overjoyed with that to see me. She didn't know I was coming. But when she came out of that room, she was over the moon to see me there. Honestly, I was like, oh no, I am not dealing with a crazy old lady today. No, thank you. She looked so excited to see me and she ran over like this and her eyes were all crazy and I was like, I'm not, I am not dealing with this today, no thank you. She came over and she was grabbing my arms and grabbing my hands and it was as if she couldn't stop the words pouring out of her mouth. She was just saying things at me. And to little 12, 13 year old me, that was absolutely terrifying. There is nothing scarier to me, even now, than a crazy person. Like crazy as in like the maze runner, people with the flair, completely mad. No, thank you. There is just absolutely nothing scarier than someone who is legitimately out of their mind. I'm sorry to this woman, but that's the vibes she was giving me. It was like she was possessed. Let's get it straight, she was not possessed. She was a medium channeling the energy. I know that now. When I was 12, I did not know that, okay? <laughs> but it was so clearly my grandmother coming through and just hitting this woman so hard and just being like, speak to my granddaughter, please. Because she was so excited to see me. She had all these things to tell me and the words were just pouring out of her mouth. And there was two very distinct stories that I can remember because after that my brain just shut down it just shut down with fear i was absolutely terrified but she was holding up my hands giving me the crazy eyes and like holding my arms and stuff she was like you should really go out with that boy you know days prior to me tagging along to this event i didn't even know what was happening i received a text on my little pebble from a boy that i was friends with at the time this is a great prop i love it he texted me asked me out and i politely declined i deleted the text and i didn't tell anyone out of embarrassment for me and embarrassment for him from rejection. So I didn't tell anyone, didn't tell my mum, didn't tell my friends, didn't tell anyone. So how did this woman know? How did this woman know the one thing that I was keeping a secret? The only way that woman could have known, the only connection that she had to me was through my mother who had just been in as her client. But my mum didn't know that. To further that, when we got back in the car on the way home, it was awfully embarrassing for me because my mum was like, so who's been texting you? Who's been asking you out? in front of my auntie and her pal, I was like, oh, this is the most embarrassing moment of my life. This woman's gave me a big red face. She's exposed me. So I think it was maybe my granny was looking over my shoulder and reading my text messages. <laughs> so before I even had a chance to reply, she was like, and you don't like your SE teacher, do you? You think she's really condescending? And I was like, oh, this is it. I've caught you in a lie. You're a complete fraud. My SE teacher is a man and he's very, very nice. Thank you very much. You are a liar, hen. I thought she was just, you know, pulling at straws, trying to find something that resonates or whatever. And at this point in my life, at that age, I was very much one foot in the paranormal, one foot still in the scepticism. Now, 100% in the paranormal. She said that and I thought she's completely wrong with that one. In my first year of high school, my SE social education teacher was a man. At my school, your social education teacher was also your guidance teacher um, for all your problems and stuff. So first year was a very nice man. When I returned to school after the summer, he'd left. He got a new job at a different school. He was replaced by, I'm sorry to say it, a condescending old cow. This woman was horrible. She was a few years off retirement, so she did not give a fuck anymore. She could not care less about the people that she had to oversee, right? That woman hated my class with a passion. That also begs the question, how did that woman know that? Was it a case of she took a wild guess that actually happened to coincidentally come true? Or did my grandmother tell her that? Is there some sort of aspect to the afterlife, like all seeing into the future? I don't want to get too much into it because obviously that's a big philosophical deep dive for another time, not today. They mentioned this in The Order on Netflix, RIP you absolute hero. <laughs> And I just thought it was a thing in the order, but in my studies in archaeology, there have been other mentions of this elsewhere. So I'm like, hmm, maybe there's a little bit of truth to this. But it's the belief that after you die, your soul passes over and joins this big pool of the collective consciousness. Everyone's thoughts, feelings, past, present, future, everyone knows everything about everything because it's the collective consciousness, the consciousness of 
everyone together. Is it possible that that's the situation and my granny was telling me this? Or maybe because of that she kind of got mixed up in time and thought that I was already being taught by this woman? There is, there's just so much, so much to get into. I don't want to open that can of worms right now because it's a topic that I would love to discuss but I've not got time to do it right now and I would love to have a full-on conversation about what you think happen when you die but it's also a very controversial thing so I do not want to touch on it right now. Is there an element of that at play with that story or was it just pure coincidence and luck? I guess we'll never know. Obviously at that time I was like 12, 13, still a child, still a mere child. All of that stuff absolutely terrified me. I had no way to explain it. My brain couldn't understand it. The psychic lady, no offence to her, she absolutely terrified me because I thought that she, the way that she came at me, it was scary, you know, for someone just to run up and grab you like that and start spewing your secrets at you. <laughs> it's kind of weird. And obviously at the time I was very scared of her and I thought she was crazy. But now looking back, I would like to apologise to her because now knowing what I know, being older, more life experience, learning more about the paranormal and psychics and how these things kind of work. I understand her better and I know that that wasn't her trying to scare me. Like now it's actually quite comforting to know that my granny was so excited to speak to me that she almost flew the old woman off her poor wee feet. <laughs> a couple of years later, that's when I really started to get into my own paranormal stuff. That's when I really started to research it and I started watching ghost adventures and I started watching more documentaries and reading books all about paranormal stuff. So I really started to kickstart my understanding. The whole concept of death in the afterlife or whatever, it's a lot more complex than we can even begin to comprehend. I do think it's a lot more complex than just die, become a ghost, pass over or get caught in between. There's a lot more to it than that. We're never going to be able to fully understand it or fully study it until we ourselves actually die. Isn't that a pleasant thought? <laughs> and on that cheery note, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think I was talking an absolute of the shite? Have you ever had an experience with any sort of paranormal stuff as well, not just psychic mediums, but do you have anything that's happened to you that's paranormal? Please let me know in the comments if you have. Also, if you have any explanations, if you like study a certain psychological thing or scientific thing and you're like, oh, I can explain that exactly, please leave that in the comments as well. I would love to debunk some of this stuff. As much as I believe, I also believe it's very important to whittle out the stuff that's not actually true. So if you can debunk any of this, please be my guest tear me down. <laughs> As always in the box below there shall be links to all of my social media accounts, uh, my sneak elite referral code and my discord link. Come along and say hello, we play games now. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and as always I will see you next Tuesday.